Hello and welcome back to the Tin Barn. I'm Pragmatic Lee and in today's video we're going to make an adapter to use angular, annular cutters in a half inch chuck. But before we uh, get started with that I want to give you a little background story uh, in how my interest in annular cutters come about. Uh, I've got a welding table over in the other side of the tin barn, 40 inch square by 5 16 thick uh, solid steel top. Overall, probably weighs about 400 pounds. The, uh, the framework is made out of six inch uh, channel iron. But at, uh, at the time that I was doing that little project, I thought I probably wanted to mount my anvil, my little anvil shaped object, uh, track anvil, on top of that welding table. So I was drilling some half inch holes in that table or in the top of it or attempting to uh, using this hand drill. Now this is not the biggest hand drill out there of course. This is a DeWalt 235G, DW235G, eight and a half amps. And you probably know what happened. As drill bit was going through the top of that uh, table, it got caught right at the end. And I cannot stall an eight and a half amp uh, drill. Uh, most of us today are used to hand drills or battery drills that you can practically stall with your hands if they get caught. Well, this one didn't stall, and it jerked me, and I came very close to a very serious injury. Uh, messed up my wrist. I still uh, some soreness of that several months later, but the biggest part was it basically threw my hip out of joint. But I'm an old man, and uh, it's taken me a little while to recover from that. But in that process, or after that happened, I got to thinking about uh, how much I'd like to have a uh, mag magnetic drill here in the shop. That table obviously is way too big to put up on a drill press. And so I got to looking around for a uh, uh, mag drill. And mag drills are not that common in this area. Uh, when I say not that common. <clears throat> New ones are very common, uh, but seven or eight hundred dollars is a little bit more than I wanted to put into to something. No more than I'd be using here. So I got to watching on uh, Craigslist, eBay, local uh, sales, and whatever, and I found one. It's a handful just to pick it up, but I found this. Uh, it's called a Magtron. It's made in England. Uh, it's a has a half inch chuck on it. Magnet works well on it. Uh, power all seems to be good. I'll show you a couple before and after pictures of what this looked like when I got it versus what it looks like now. But a lot of these mag drills, if you're not familiar with them, what happens? When you set this on your table, plug it in, you engage the magnet down here. And this will hold the drill in place and you can actually do your, do your drilling uh, uh, kind of in a similar situation as to what you would have on a drill press. This has a half inch chuck which allows you to go down even to the smallest drill bits. Uh, even though this is made in England, this is a Jacobs chuck only. Uh, but I wanted to uh, to drill using an angular cutters, primarily because I want some uh, this job coming up needs to be fairly precision, uh, and drill bits just don't uh, drill that clean a hole. And besides drilling a half inch drill bit, I would probably need to at least do one step, a quarter inch step, and then maybe the half inch or best to go quarter inch, three eighths, and then half. Uh, I just saw I had laid over here on the, uh, on the workbench. The results of that drill, drill bit when it got hung with that other drill. These are the pieces I could find. It literally shattered that drill, that drill bit. All right, but back to this. An annular cutters have a three-quarter inch shaft with two flats on them 
and are often used in mag chucks that have a different type or mag drills that have a different type chuck where they will go in and clamp in. They also, on those type mag drills, have provisions for these pointers that go inside the annular cutter. I keep wanting to say angle, but it's annular, A-N-N-U-L-A-R. And what happens, this allows you to line your hole up, but as you drill down, this goes up to a stop. And when you get done drilling, you've got that little plug in here. Sometimes it'll fall out easily, other times it has to be worked out. But in the uh, mag drills that have the chuck to hold these, actually has a little stop at the top, so when you retract it, it'll push that pin back down and push your plug out. Obviously, this doesn't have it. But I want to have that pointer to line my holes up. So in this cutter we're going to make... I'm starting with a piece of three inch by inch and an eighth round stock. We're going to put a, a three quarter inch long half inch shaft boss on here to go in the chuck. And then this will be the holder with a three quarter inch. We'll put a couple of grub screws in it, 90 degrees to hold it in. And then this area right here is going to be some free space for that plunger to go up in. Obviously, there won't be anything to eject that plug, uh, but it uh, will allow me to use that pointer. So let's get turned around, set up on the lathe, and get started with this project. All right, I've got you in an overhead view again this time on the lathe, but hopefully this time I don't have you looking upside down. What I've got is a piece of inch and eighth round stock, uh, just a little over three inches long, and I've got the collet chuck in the lathe. All right, we're going to start out first putting this half inch, three quarter inch long, half inch boss on uh, to go in the drill chuck itself. So we'll set there and zero out our Z axis. Come in three quarters of an inch. And I'll set my, my carriage stock right there. All right, we'll touch off there, zero out the x-axis. And if that is a piece of 1.125 minus 0.50, we need about 625 thousandths off the diameter. set my x-axis. That was about 610 thousandths there. So we'll get a measurement. It says 515 thousandths, so we don't have much more to go. Alright, let's see how close we are to 500 thousandths. 502 thousandths. I think I'll polish that just a little bit, and we'll call that one good. Now, while we're right here, we'll put a little chamfer on that as well. All right, I'm going to take this collet out, put the half-inch collet in, and then we'll start working on the other end. All right, I have our workpiece turned around in the collet chuck now. And first thing we're going to do is drill that uh, clearance hole for the, for the plunger. It's marked on our plans as 328, which is 2164. And we're going to drill that two inches deep. And that should give plenty of room for this 
this head right here to clear. First thing we're going to do, of course, is this uh, starter drill, center drill. Now what I like to do when I'm drilling like this, my tailstock back here, when I use the cam lock to lock it down, sometimes it will still slide back just a little bit uh, while everything's getting seated. So I'll let that get seated, then come back and just using my pocket rule, zero out the DRO at that point. So we want to go in two inches. Now, just to be sure nothing has slipped or moved anymore, and that's still within a few thousandths. The bend of the rule will account for a little bit there, but we're close enough we can go into our two inch mark. Just gonna be sure. And the way I come up with that depth of two inches was the amount sticking out here plus I wanted to be able to drill a half inch hole and the plunger not be in the way. If I go more than uh, more than a half inch deep hole I'll just take the plunger out of the way but for the project I got coming up which is drilling a bunch of holes in the top of my welding table I wanted to be able to use this pointer right here to get myself lined up. So that clears fine. Next thing we want to do is start our three quarter inch wide by 920 thousandths deep uh, recess for this part to mount in. So I'm going to start with a, a half inch bit. And then we'll bore out to the three quarters. All right, just like before, we're going to set our zero on the DRO. And we're going to come in 920 thousandths. That'll be to the point. We're going to be boring this into a somewhat of a blind hole. We do have that plunger clearance in there. But I want to be able to start with a flat surface. And I've got, uh, I found a bunch of these flat end drill bits uh, some time back. And they've come in useful for something like this. If you don't have a flat end drill bit, you can take a half inch end mill and bottom out your, your hole in there. Of course, it's got that, what, 60? whatever that degree angle is on this bit. Now I shouldn't be able to cut any additional depth here because it is a square end. But with that hole it might allow a little bit of cutting so we'll do the same thing. Zero. And I'm a little over. It did cut a little bit. I'm at 950 thousandths. All that will do is allow this to go in just a little bit further. Uh, not a big deal at all. Now we'll take our smaller boring bar. Once we get that hole bored out a little bit, we'll go to a larger bar. And I will set the stop right there. Actually, what I can do, even though I went a little bit deep there, I can zero that out on the Z. Now I come in my 920 thousandths here. 
I'm just watching the DRO. That's 920 thousandths right there. So I can get back and get my proper shoulder like I wanted to begin with. And we're going to come in and touch off. I think we got a large enough hole there now I can go to a, a larger uh, larger boring bar and now would be a good time as well to get a measurement. All right, that's about 625. Let's get this one touched off with the same thing on setting our depth. This boring bar is not sticking out exactly the same, so I'll have to redo that. There's the zero. All right, so let's get a let's get a cut with that, and then we'll get a measurement. I don't use these inside my my chronometers very often, so I pretty much have to learn how to read them, relearn how to read them every time. All right, that's 650 plus 6 plus 20 is 670. So that's 80 thousandths. This is one that I want to get pretty pretty close on. Don't want much don't want any slop if I can help it where that uh, annular cutter goes in here. So here's 40 thousandths. Or about 37 according, 37 according to the DRO. And I'll take 20 more. Spring pass. That's 730 thousandths. So I'm going to creep up on this. I'm going to take 10. That looks like we still need about seven thousandths. It should still be just a little bit. More to go. According to the DRO, it's two thousandths. Again, I'm just trying to sneak up on this, taking about a thousandths at the time for these last few, few little bits. fits and the depth looks just right. I'm I'm pleased with that. The only thing I'm really not pleased with, this piece of raw stock that I'm using here was turned down off of larger stock. And it doesn't have that good a finish on the on the outside right here. We still got a fairly thick wall. But I think what I'm going to do is chamfer these two edges right here. And then put the uh, uh, the belt grinder on this outside surface. All right, like I say, <clears throat> I want to try to clean up this outside surface a little bit. I got some uh, 
Uh, rags down here on the bottom. I got the lathe in reverse. I think that looks a whole lot better. Now what we're going to want to do is carry this over to the mill and put a couple of uh, grub screws in here at 90 degrees. Okay, I moved the uh, workpiece and collet into a uh, 90 degree collet block. Got it mounted in my vise now and got the edge of the collet block with the edge of the jaw. I put a little machinist jack down here uh, just to keep that from tilting over. And now we're gonna, well, first thing I wanna do is double check and be sure it is seated down good. All right, we're gonna center it now. All right, we've got it centered on the Y, and that was our edge there. Now I've zeroed out. Probe is 200 thousandths, so I'll come over 100 thousandths. Re-zero out the DRO. Now I've taken some measurements on the cutter, and the center of this from this outside end is 450 thousandths. So we lock the table down, X and Y position. I'm going to use quarter 20 set screws in this. Uh, I think they'll be a good fit, plus I've got plenty of them. And our tap drill for quarter 20. And our Spiral fluke, quarter 20 tap. Now I should be able to loosen the vise. Turn that 90 degrees, line up. Rinse and repeat. All right, I'm going to do a little deburring on this inside and out, clean it out. There's one more thing I want to do before we uh, give, give this a test run. So what I'm going to do is take this uh, adapter, put it in the uh, kiln at about 600, 650 degrees for 30, 40 minutes and hot blue it. That way uh, it'll uh, cut down on some of the rust here in, uh, in the tin barn. It's very humid in my area. But first, I'm just going to make a trial cut in this piece of aluminum, aluminum. Excuse the arm, I'm trying to reach for the uh, Z-axis lock. Now I have just a little point made here, uh, and what I'm wanting to do is line this pointer up. All right, and as I said before, I expect it to leave a little plug in inside the uh, cutter, and this is not going to push it out with this adapter, uh, but hopefully I can get it out without having to take this out in between each hole. So let's try, this is about 600 RPMs. And 
in this case, uh, being about the smallest annular cutter you can get is a 7 16th. This is a, a half inch, and that did not leave a plug at all, just simply because uh, it pretty much cut out everything uh, in the hole. And that made a very clean, clean hole. So I'm going to carry this over to the uh, kiln now, take the cutter back out, put it in the kiln, uh, hot blow it, and then we'll meet back over at the workbench and wrap this video up. Looks like there might be just a little bit of run out there. I'm at 502 thousandths, but I'm plenty satisfied with that. Okay, I put our workpiece in the kiln at about 600 degrees and left it for about 30 minutes. Uh, probably could have stood another 15 minutes as I got more brown than I did actual blue in on it. But it should have enough of a, a coating on it now to not rust. I've reinstalled the cutter, the annular cutter. And I didn't mention this before, but these have very sharp edges on the flutes as, as well as sharp on the end. And again, Made to go into the, a chuck, as you saw in the example, uh, it can go in any half inch chuck, such as the uh, half inch chuck that was on the uh, mill, to go into one on the lathe. Uh, I don't think I would try to use this in a hand drill, uh, but on a drill press, any half inch chuck, that should fit in. And as I said earlier, I'm going to be doing a project on my welding table. Uh, Going to take some ideas from Chuck Bomberino uh, for my C clamp storage, and also uh, an idea that he and several others have done making clamps uh, for being able to clamp something on the inside area of your welding table. So I'm going to that'll be in an upcoming video. Probably not sure if it'll be the next video, but very shortly, uh, and we'll put this annular cutter to the real test. If it works out good, I may go ahead and later purchase a set of these cutters for larger holes, uh, say up to an inch, an inch and a quarter. Hope you enjoyed this video, got a little bit from it. We'll see you on the next one.